Happy Black History Month. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme today, take Jesus with you. Take Jesus with you. I am not a morning person. That said, my first few steps in the morning are of pure agony. But one thing I have incorporated into my daily morning ritual living in the Midwest is checking my weather app. I open my weather app up to see what the weather's gonna look like and how I might wanna dress to get along in Chicago. About over a week ago, I opened my app up and it indicated that it was going to rain. I made a mental note in my head, gonna rain today, get your umbrella. And what do you know, I hurried and got ready, rushed out of the house, had my lunch, my book bag, my computer. I was driving halfway to work talking when I thought to myself as the rain began to pour. I don't have my umbrella. I got rain boots on, I got my coat on, I'm dressed warmly, but I don't have my umbrella. That's when my friend announced it, and you can look at my hair a little bit, but you've got natural hair, Charlene. <laughs> you know what she was trying to imply, don't you? Your hair can get wet and you'll still be in the same condition. But I was also thinking with the daycare open, as I shared with you all, and the need for us to walk all the way around the building, that this was not gonna be any short trek with the rain going on from the parking lot to my office. When it rains, I try to take an umbrella with me. Perhaps when it rains, you take an umbrella too. Perhaps for some of you working folks, when you're preparing to go to work, you take a lunch with you, because that sounds like a good idea instead of spending your money at fast food restaurants. Maybe you take an extra layer because the weather changes so drastically in Chicago. I noticed some people even take an odd thing like toothbrush and floss and toothpaste with them to work because in the middle of the day they want to be able to clean their teeth. Post-COVID, some people even bring hand sanitizer. It's not unusual these days to be out with a group of people and someone pulls it out and says, hey, I got enough for the whole table. Maybe you take your insurance card. You want to know that no matter what you get into, you'll have your insurance card on you. For rape victims, I've been told that they have pepper spray on them. Some folks have a conceal and carry on them. At our last youth lock-in, some people came and bought with them sleeping bags and toiletries. If we are going somewhere when we leave home, when we're not at church, in the world, on our way, certain things we deem important to have on us. I would like to deposit for your thought and your consideration that when you leave church and as you face each day, you should take Jesus with you. This is where we enter the biblical passage today. Jesus has just left church, AKA the synagogue. He had just left that space of learning, community and spiritual care. And now they were on their way to someone's home. No sooner than they entered the home, a problem was awaiting them. Often when we leave, when we go on our way, there is stuff waiting for us in the world. Somebody ought to say amen. And now even in church, stuff happens. But out there, out there, anything can happen. And sometimes we are more prepared and other times we're not to deal with it. They came from church and entered a home where there was someone there with COVID. Simon's mother-in-law had a fever. She was under the weather. She was not doing well. She was sick. And Jesus doesn't back away, but Jesus moves in just a little bit closer. He lifts her up by taking her hand, by touching her. Something, it's not what you say all the time, but sometimes it's how you show up. It's how you enter the room, just being in the midst, just sitting at the bedside, just listening while someone talks, just looking in someone's eye, just being there. Jesus shows up and out, and the lady is healed. I go to a lot of meetings, and I have an opinion about meetings, if you ever want to know, but not today. 
But what is most interesting about meetings is when there is a conflict. I mean, when you're in a group and there's a group A and they want things to go one way, and there's a group B and they want things to go another way, it's very interesting to watch Christians and how they engage. And I must say that I'm often surprised. Often what has been missing are signs of love and grace and mercy. I have seen people be harsh, and I've even seen blood sometimes. And sometimes the meeting can be right after worship, and having just left a spiritual high, and people are going for it. They're going for the win. I watch as people fight for their point, fight for their win. People have a lot of investment in getting their way. And through the years, I have often comically wondered, did they forget to bring Jesus? Where is Jesus? Not only is where is Jesus in the meeting, but where is Jesus throughout the day as you face certain circumstances? Where is Jesus? Did you forget to take Jesus? So what do you mean, Pastor, about taking Jesus with you? What, what's all this taking Jesus with you about? Taking Jesus is being mindful of our spirituality in all endeavors. Inviting Jesus into our decision-making process and responses. If the Muslims can pray five times a day, maybe we can get three prayers in. It's creating space for Jesus to live in our spiritual home. It's realizing that in our spiritual toolbox, we have some special tools called love and grace and mercy and healing and wisdom and joy. And at any time, we can pull them out and we can use them. Jesus didn't hesitate to touch the woman and to lift her up to where he is. Taking Jesus with you means we don't have to lower ourselves to where others are. But sometimes in a situation, we are called to lift others up. So when someone is in distress, sometimes we don't have to go down to their level and get in distress with them and get into the gossip with them, but we can lift them up. We can take Jesus with us. We can take Jesus into any situation and say, I got a word for you today. The gospel song says, long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus. Y'all, somebody know that song? Long as I got King Jesus, long, long, long as I got King Jesus. I don't what? Need nobody else. When we have Jesus with us, it puts us in a much better place to enter our situation, our circumstances. We don't have to walk this journey alone. We don't, we don't have to do this Christian discipleship alone. The other day I was going to the store and I hate to change purses. I am a bag lady. And I got to the store and I got all my goods and I was in the line and that's when it dawned on me that I didn't have my credit card on me. That I didn't have any way to pay for the items that were in my basket. Sometimes when we're doing this thing called life, sometimes when we're out here trying to wing it on our own, we might look up and realize we don't have Jesus with us. We haven't taken Jesus on the journey. Jesus did do one good thing. He healed the lady, but he did more than that. He healed others. If you follow the text, they brought more folks to Jesus and he healed them, and they brought more folks to Jesus, and he healed them. The text says that all of the city was being gathered at his door, and he healed them, and they brought more. One of the greatest needs we see in the Bible is for physical, mental, and emotional healing. And perhaps it's not so very different today. I remember talking to one member commenting about how much need there is in our world today. There is deep need across our globe. Let the enormity of that just sit with you for a moment. There is deep need in our world. And Jesus, Jesus was a one person show. But united, we are more than one. We are a community that has survived for many years. We together convey the love of God right 
outside our doors. We are the church. We are the salt. We are the light. And the needs of our community are just as great today as in Jesus' day. This text ends where we began today, starting our day with Jesus. Early in the morning, while it is quiet and the world has not yet awakened, Jesus goes away and puts a little distance between him and everything else to pray. He begins his day centering. He begins his day in the bosom of God. He takes the time needed to get ready for a new day. He puts in time being still because he doesn't know what the day holds. How many of you take time at the beginning of your day just to prepare, just to center? Jesus prepares for the day. The disciples even try to come get him. Oh, oh, he lets them know what is important in that moment. It is important for him at the beginning of his day to take time to nourish and prepare himself. And if Jesus needed time in the morning, <laughs> I dare say some of us might need some time in the morning as well. A friend of mine has twins. At birth, a lady gave both of them crochet blankets. One of the twins really took to her blanket, the other not so much so. As they grew, the blankets looked smaller and smaller, and the one who sort of took to hers released it. She had outgrown it. But that other twin, that other twin found security in, in her blanket, and she took it everywhere. Her parents tried to distance her between the blanket, tried to make it disappear, but she was not having any of it. She loved it and she slept with it. And on long road trips, she took it with her. It became evident to her mom and her dad that she wasn't gonna let this blanket go. They recruited some fiber artists to help them out. Look, we got a situation. This thing has even got holes in it and we need it to be patched up. And so some fiber artists joined in and patched it up. And even though it didn't look like new, it was gonna get a few more miles. It was clear that this baby blanket was gonna go on for a few more miles. People of God, Jesus is our covering. Jesus is our blanket. Jesus is our guide. Jesus is our way maker. Jesus is our umbrella. Jesus is our joy. Jesus is our example. Jesus is shining image of how we can live our best life. Jill Scott says, living my life like it's golden, but Jesus shows us how to live our life even like it's golden. Jesus not only models for the disciples of yesterday, but Jesus is still modeling for us today. And when you leave your home, when you leave the church, when you go out into the world, when you face whatever comes your way, take Jesus. Take Jesus with you. Amen. Amen.